Hi guys and welcome to today's Trade of the Week episode in which I'm going to be discussing a pound dollar short which banked me 4%. Just a quick sign up before we dive into this video, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. So thanks guys and yeah, let's dive straight in. So to begin with, what I want to do is look at the daily structure because the daily structure on pound dollar was absolutely beautiful. So one thing you as a trader have to remember is that trend lines don't mean shit. It's all about market structure because one thing that you always have to remember is that market structure is king. And why is that? Well, let's have a look over here. So if we want to look at what market structure was doing on pound dollar, and we're just going to focus on price action over here. What we can then see is that we had this high. Then we had this low. Then we had this high. Then we had this low. Then we had this high. Then we had a beautiful, beautiful double bottom. And then we created a new higher high in comparison to this previous high over here. So as you can obviously see, we were in this obvious downtrend. And we went over into an uptrend. And why don't trend lines mean shit? Well, as we can see over here, if we were just to draw on this trend line, and let me just remove the circles for you guys just to clean it up a bit. What you can then see is that essentially what you had was a breakout of the trend line and a retest, right? And this is factually, this is the spot where everybody or, or retail traders want to go long on the break retest of that trend line. But what you have to understand as a trader is that market structure is far more important. So we never broke this high over here, which was the previous lower high. And until that lower high was not broken, we were still in a downtrend and therefore longs were not on the board. So then looking at what happened afterwards is that we created a new high up here in comparison to this previous lower high. And therefore we had an official trend switch. And therefore we were allowed to go and look for longs. I remember from the daily market outlook, I did anticipate that there were going to be longs from this descending channel. And as we can see, we started impulsing towards the upside. So essentially what we had was an impulse, retracement, impulse into my higher time frame potential reversal area, which is very mechanical and based off a strict set of rules. If you're interested in learning those rules, please make sure to check out the course in the link in the bio down below. But for now, I'm just going to tell you guys, okay, this, is what's, um, this was our potential reversal area. And as you can see, we reversed from it. Um, another key concept that you have to understand, which becomes more clear if you look at the four hour, is that price can never just impulse, impulse, impulse without ever correcting. And as we can see over here, we had a massive impulse, massive correction. As you can see here, massive impulse, and then a potential massive correction. And all that rests for us traders to do is understand where those corrections are going to be coming from. So in this situation and this particular situation, I knew that it was very likely that we were going to see a trend switch and um, the beginning of a correction from this higher time frame reversal area if we were to see a nice price pattern within that zone. And that was exactly what we got. Because if we look at the one hour time frame, what we can then see so we had this beautiful head and shoulders, right? So after this massive, massive overextended move towards the upside, so this entire move towards the upside and price coming into my potential reversal area over here, I knew that the chance, if we were to see a price pattern, which was um, giving us bear signs, that the chance that we were going to start correcting back towards the downside was very, very high. So in this particular situation, I identified that we had this head and shoulders pattern over here. And once we formed that left shoulder, I knew, okay, what I always want to do is mark out the high of that left shoulder. And as we can see, we came back up exactly to tap the resistance of that left shoulder. So what I could then see was that I knew that once price was going to retrace back up to that left shoulder resistance area, that that was going to be my potential area from where I wanted to go short. So in this particular situation, what I then saw on the 30 minute time frame was that we came back up. We retraced beautifully from this area of support. 
So back up, right towards that left shoulder resistance area. And what I then did was that I went short right on the 618 Fibonacci with my stop loss set at the next Fib level or just above the 786 with my target set just above the 0 0.27. So essentially what happened from there onwards is that we can see, boom, beautiful tap into 618, which after we just absolutely tanked towards the downside. So there are some more confluences why I entered at this specific hour at one o'clock. Um, those confluences are shared within the course, which you can find in the bio down below. But for now, this is all you guys need to know. I ended up on the 618 at around one o'clock. And as we can see, we hit our take profit at like 14.30. So it was a very, very fast trade. Um, yeah, in which we were only not, yeah, like max one and a half hours. So yeah, one and a half hours, 4% done for the week, essentially, if you bank one of those big trades. So yeah, that was um, yeah my trade of the week. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And I can't wait to see you all in tomorrow's daily market outlook. Thanks, guys.